Hi, I am Vitold and I'm here to tell you what changes have been done to one of the best bikes, if actually not the one considered as the best out of them all. And I'm talking about the BMW R1200 and now R1250 GS. My point is to go through the changes and tell you what they mean, what you get extra, what is different, and in the end of the day, if and when it may be worth to upgrade your current BMW GS to the newest one. So the latest model change took place in 2019. Then for 2021, there were some other upgrades and some differences in base equipment. And I'll help you make the best decision possible now. So stay tuned as my videos are totally honest. They are not sponsored. And I have ridden dozens of these bikes over the years. And I want to share my learnings with you guys so that those all those days spent on bikes are put into some more use now. Now a bit of background on what kind of changes we are talking about here with this R1200 and R1250 GS. BMW R1200 GS was introduced, this background is needed. It was introduced in 2005 after BMW R1150 GS, which was being a BMW's flagship before. And from that time, its engine was of 1170, so 1,100. 170 cubic centimeters and it stayed that way all the way till 2018. However, there was a major change in the lineup in 2013 when the LC model of the GS was introduced with different looks and plenty of enhanced technology. It, it was completely, if you would look at it, you could see a different bike than before. It was still called R1200 GS and just got this technical symbol of LC to differentiate it more easily, but you actually won't find it anywhere on the bike's fairing or graphics. This one really looked appealing. And I would say actually cool, while still maintaining its rock-solid image, the rock-solid and legendary image of BMW GS. And now with R1250 GS, it still in fact looks almost exactly the same as that model from 2013, so the one with LC additional um, tag or a name, which is not a bad thing actually, I think. But let's go straight to the specifics now, and to the specifics when comparing and deciding between staying or even choosing the last R1200 GS or going for the newer R1250 GS. First thing to cover is the engine. BMW added a few more cubic centimeters of displacement this time. From 1170 cubic centimeters in the last R1200 GS that was introduced in 2005 and stayed all that way till 2018 to now 1254 cubic centimeters. So the bike got almost 100 cubic centimeters more and that brought more power. But in terms of power alone, the latest change took place in 2013 and the big GS got its actually very useful 125 horsepower. The new one, the 1250, is now having 136. That's around 10% more, which actually matters and you should be able to feel it. Now let me share a new thought with you briefly. If BMW would really consider this a major model change in 2019, when introducing this R1250 because they changed the name. So I assume this was supposed to be a big change. They actually might have changed just as well the name of the GS from 1200GS to R1300GS since 1254 rounds up nicely to that. And this, the fact that they didn't do it, may suggest that they have already the next model change in mind. And it makes sense, perhaps, that this upcoming change will consider, it will include also the bike's design. I mean the visual look. Now about the torque, as this is a super important thing to talk about when mentioning the name of a GS nowadays. I understand that this kind of an engine may be weird to some of you, as BMW is the only manufacturer that loves boxes and motorcycles, and they've been continuing to produce them for many, many years. If we would include cars, it would also be along with Porsche and Subaru. And all of them are now famous for their boxer engines. And in BMW motorcycles, there are four or five main things that this comes along with. First thing is that cylinders stick out to the sides. It may look strange, but it's original at the same time. And it's easier to damage them, but on the other hand, if the bike falls, 
and it's not a crazy huge crash that damages the whole bike's engine, then it is much easier to lift the bike as it rests at around 30 degrees or something like this. Around 30 degrees, they claim as well. The second thing is that these engines produce insane torque. 143 Newton meters in the R1250 GS and comparing it with still plenty in R1200 GS that had 125 Newton meters, actually the same number as the horsepower at that time, so it's, it's easy to remember. Now, it's a large upgrade too with this 2019 R1250 GS, it's actually more than 10%. And this bike is a torque monster and there is no other bike in class that has so much torque. And this helps it explode when accelerating at any gear at almost any RPM. It's really great when you want to overtake without reducing gears, especially that it reaches its top torque at just 6,250 RPM. And this is one of the biggest advantages, if not the biggest advantage, of a boxer engine in a GS. And despite having less power than some of the competitors, it isn't always slower or it doesn't feel slower unless you get involved in the race, because if you get um, involved in a race and you want to race, you get to the red line fairly quickly. And all that power of Ducati and KTM bikes comes into play and they just take off like jet fighters comparing to the GS. It's not slow by any means, this GS, don't get me wrong, but during um, racing, um, it's gonna get smoked. <laughs> <laughs> but by the more powerful, much more powerful competitors. But during regular riding and touring, especially with a lot of additional weight, which means a passenger, especially a heavy passenger, <laughs> and yourself if you're heavy, and luggage, BMW's Boxer does a great job, really, and it doesn't have to flex its muscles, really. Third thing is that the sound is not something that I personally like, especially comparing to the V2 engines. but it is original on the other hand. Fourth thing about the Boxer engine for you to know is that once you rev the bike while standing, it will make the whole bike slightly swing left and right. This has been there forever, as far as I remember, forever <laughs> with the GS. Every generation has less and less of this behavior thanks to balancing the engine more and more. But I say it is fun to experience that. And this stays generally unchanged, meaning that it's, it's there in those boxer powered motorcycles of BMW. And the last fifth thing about the boxer is that it doesn't rev that high at all. And this translates into some necessary gear changes when gaining speed. But on the other hand, having so much torque, it doesn't work as a disadvantage. And I think I've never heard anybody complain about it. On the other hand, it helps fuel consumption and all boxer engines tend to be rather fuel efficient. And doing my trips and riding a V2 power bike myself, I was always the one who would have to stop for refueling first and a boxer powered BMW, because I usually would, would ride with, with them or at least with one guy who was riding a BMW. That guy was my dad, <laughs> is my dad. <laughs> so, so these bikes, their bike would still have a few liters left in the fairly same uh, fuel tank. And that's a fact. I noticed some people also claiming that um, switching from R1200 GS to R1250 GS, they experienced a raise in fuel consumption. But I've got my theory here that this is about the new engine being more powerful and letting them do, for example, wheelies as much as they want, even in the second and the third gear. <laughs> So there's more fun, there's more power. The conclusion is that some may just ride more aggressively. I think it makes sense, doesn't it? And the second reason, now moving to the big things, and one of uh, the technical advancements in R1250 GS is a thing called shift cam technology that BMW proudly placed the name of even on the sides of the new GS. And I'm not going to make it complicated for you because that's not the point. This is variable valve timing. And to us, this is an improvement in how and how quickly the bike reacts to throttle. The point is to feel more power at almost the whole, if if, if not the, totally the whole range of RPM, and to keep the engine's behavior more smooth. And it seems like they've nailed it. It's quite complicated mechanically, but gets a lot of words of respect because of doing the job that it was intended to do. It may also help you save some fuel 
as it is supposed to improve fuel efficiency. And we are talking a five to six percent. So it won't be a financial reason to swap the bikes for you guys, I guess. So still, this is assuming that you would ride exactly the same as on the less encouraging, less sporty R1200 GS. So this is a difference that further enhances the experience of performance of this new 1250 GS. Now, if you ride a lot, or you expect to ride a lot in the nearest future, it might perhaps make sense to make a switch to R1250GS from R1200GS, as simply you will start enjoying a bike that behaves in an even more fun and more responsive way more quickly. And I would say that if the design part really matters to you and you care a lot for your new, expensive, obviously, GS to be visibly different from an outgoing model, because sometimes it makes, it makes sense, you may still modify it on your own and not let this hold you back from swapping the bikes even right now. Third change is the TFT digital screen, and this applies if you've got 2017 and earlier models, as I believe that the change was introduced in 2018. So yes, still the 1200 one, the previous one. So it's not bad now, the screen, and perhaps it actually seems, according to users who spend a lot of time in different conditions, it perhaps is one of the better and more intuitive ones out there. And it's got some useful uh, features, like uh, the one that um, changes the place where the red area begins on the rev counter. So depending on whether the engine is cold or warm, and if it's, for example, cold, the red area will be displayed earlier, so at lower RPM, so that you don't act in a harsh way to the engine. Later, once it's hot, you may use the whole range safely according to the screen because the red line will start, start later at higher RPM. And this is something that I like. And older GSs did not have that. I'm not a fan myself of those digital screens of motorcycles, however, but this one seems to be okay. Fourth thing to mention, but only in terms of uh, differences, not really as a reason to upgrade, is a new uh, brakes supplier. It's not Brembo in the front anymore, but Hayes, 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 which actually specializes in brakes for um, bicycles. It sounds a bit scary, but apparently the only difference comparing to still those awesome brakes from before is the new logo on them right now. In the rear, there's still Brembo, and in my opinion, BMW brakes can be the best out there. And with their ABS system, they will do the job better than any human could do without putting themselves at risk. So best part is that it's all tuned to work also very well on gravel roads and other loose surfaces too, or not even loose, other surfaces just in general too. So they stay just as good as before. Fifth thing you should know about is the weight. The new R1250GS is heavier now, and that's usually not good news. And it's not good here too. The thing is that it's now five kilograms heavier, which generally shouldn't make any noticeable difference since we're talking about over 240 kilograms and specifically 249 kilograms of the new GS. So I don't think you should bother yourselves with that. And it's mostly the shift cam system, it's the front light, the display, these things make a difference and they are mainly responsible for this weight gain here. Now fuel time, it still is 20 liters. Also the seat is still adjustable and it's adjustable between 85 and 87 centimeters in a really very easy way. Now in the sixth point, let's move to off the road. And here not much has been changed directly and it's still better than you may think if you have never ridden a GS. And I'm not a GS fanboy, but there are reasons for these bikes to be so successful in general and also so successful when considering doing off-road riding. And it's still just 18 and a half centimeters of ground clearance. That is much less than in the new Ducati Multistrada V4, which has 22 centimeters and it's more than Multistrada 1260 at the same time that had only 16.8 centimeters, wheel travel is not crazy as well here. But if you want that, go for an adventure. It has 22 centimeters of ground clearance and, and I, as I remember, two centimeters more of uh, wheel travel, both in the front and in the rear. But all that is fine in the regular one. And the bike actually does better thanks now, thanks to this uh, new, enhanced, changed, um, improved engine, which behaves better and that translates into better feel of the whole bike. The whole bike gives you even more control and fun and also 
therefore confidence off the road just because of the changes in its engine. Off-road capabilities have always been a strong point for a GS, regardless of generation, and that was thanks to its incredible balancing and low center of gravity thanks to those cylinders sticking out to the sides. And there's a lot about controlling the engine that matters here too. And you will still find helpful modes in a GS, modes of throttle response, modes of traction control, and ABS modes that let you stay in full control while utilizing the best of what those safety systems provide you with. And I do, <laughs> yeah, the, how that sounds, I do realize that uh, listening to myself, this sounds like an advertisement of the newer bike and, and perhaps it encourages you even to switch uh, to it from R1200 GS. But look, I don't have a GS. I also don't work for BMW and no other motorcycle company uh, either. And to sum up off-roading, getting back to the specifics, directly there's nothing that would enhance off-road riding, but the engine transfers its positive effects into also this aspect of riding the adventure motorcycle. It does mean a lot when you go off-road. How will you feel control when the power is delivered? How much torque there is at, at lower RPM. And this new GS is better in every aspect. Now, seventh point is about suspension and drivetrain. Suspension is unchanged comparing to R1200 GS. There's still BMW unique telelever suspension in the front that keeps the bike flat and very well controllable in corners, which is also at the same time not a perfect solution for off-roading, but it won't, it will not stop you from getting where you want. And in the rear there's parallel suspension, which means a single-sided swing arm with a drive shaft inside, which is a perfect solution in this category, I believe. It's, it's virtually maintenance free. There is no spraying every few hundred kilometers and there is no replacing unless you throw the bike under a train. There are no real improvements here. And in terms of equipment, that's an eighth point, there is a system that helps you get moving if the bike is pointed uphill so that it doesn't roll back when you're releasing clutch. And there may be a heated seat also for both people and that's new for 2021. The rider switches it on through the computer while the passenger has a dedicated switch on the side of the seat. And now look at this. Adaptive front LED light that moves the light stream in corners is here as well from now on. And this is as well available only from 2021 model year. So BMW is finally catching up with Ducati Multistrada that has had that for several years now. Well, better later than never. It also reacts in the other axis. So up and down, which is helpful as well if you go downhill or if you go uphill. Now, you may also tell your GS, not literally tell, but you may make it use a function that's called cruising lights and that makes the front indicators turn on and stay dimmed on all the time, just dimmed with less light. And this is supposed to be there for better visibility. But what I believe is more helpful is what happened to rear indicators, which now may be also acting like a brake light, not instead of the main brake light, but along with it. And I believe that there is never enough helpful light systems that tell others that you are there and what you're doing and perhaps this explains also the front cruising lights but uh, I guess this would be mostly useful uh, when doing off-roading. I'm not sure how it's regarding the legal things if you can have them on in Europe or not. I believe that in America it's it's all fine but anyway all this is not as helpful I remain remember that it's not as helpful as a good exhaust system on a good old V2 engine but at least BMW are trying so props to them for that. There's also a feature that R1200 GS doesn't have and which is called dynamic braking which is responsible for preventing you from unintentionally adding throttle Oh, that way, sorry, haven't ridden, it's winter outside, so haven't ridden for a while. <laughs> anyway, so it prevents you from adding throttle while doing, when doing emergency braking. And it senses when you slam on the brakes, and if you haven't managed to twist your wrist back enough to close the throttle, this new system stops engine from pulling, and it stops your rear wheel from pushing you forward, and in effect it shortens, or it may shorten the braking distance because if you would add the power normally the bike would keep pulling that doesn't help you stop i like these kinds of improvements and i believe that developing them 
deserves a big thank you to BMW from our side. And these are the main eight points and differences that you will be able to experience coming off of an R1200GS and switching to R1250GS. Some of the equipment is now standard. Um, for some, you will need to pay additionally. It's now up to you to decide if that's enough for you to travel yourselves with swapping your current GS and getting the newest one. The main differences are in the engine with this 1250 and that influences how the bike feels. Is it nicer? Likely, yes, it is. And I would think I would wait for a major design change and then get the new one. And I feel that leaving the design unchanged means that the complete change is on its way already and it may be reasonable to stay patient for a little moment longer. And I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. And if it was, then see you in the next one.